Welcome to the chairperson of the Nelson Mandela University Council, Ambassador Nozipo Badil, and Janine Badil has just joined us. Our Vice Chancellor, affectionately known as Umama Wetu, who's leading e University Gadata, Professor Sbongele Mutwa. Um, Professor Crane Sudin, who I've met already, who is the CEO of the Human Sciences Research Council, and Dr. Selo Hatang, the Chief Executive Officer of the Nelson Mandela Foundation, members of our Executive Council at our university, the professoriate which I've seen, the deans, members of the academy, our students, and to all our guests who've traveled far and wide to join us tonight. Um, we'd like to note an apology from Umamu Chancellor Yetu, Dr. Geraldine Fraser Molagheti, who couldn't be with us tonight. So I was given strict instructions not to um, give a keynote, but <laughs> I'd like to locate the Mandela Colloquium, the Dalibunga Colloquium that we are in tonight, colleagues. Um, it's part of a university's year-long centenary program, which we launched last year on Dadu Mandela's birthday. The activities have been intentionally firmly rooted in the academic and scholarly enterprise of our institution. And these were mostly in the form of, of colloquia, which we ha have one of tonight, conferences, book launches, public lectures, and these were championed by our seven faculties. So we launched the program um, with a colloquium hosted by the education faculty that sought to interrogate education as a transformative weapon. As we know, Dr. Mandela charged with that speech, uh, famous speech in 2003. Then we hosted an inaugural youth development convention, which will be an annual feature in our program. I'd just like to mention notable public lectures that were held in this period, which is last year. A public lecture um, uh, given by Advocate Tulima Donzella, followed by the former Deputy Chief Justice, who is an honorary doctorate recipient of ours, Dehang Moseneke, uh, who he talked on rethinking private law and social justice post Mandela. And lastly, I'd like to mention a public lecture by the South African Reserve Bank Governor, Mr. Leseja Khanyaho, on the role of central bank in building a democracy. Flate, flate, my story is eight. Now we're going to get into the, the program. Before I call um, our, our DVC, Prof. Leach, DVC Research and Engagement, I'd like to just, he didn't want me to, but just introduce him to you. He's responsible for formulating and directing the research and engagement strategic priorities of our university. Also included in this priority is internalization strategy and establishment of national and international partnerships and our library services previous to this role. He served as the very first executive dean of faculty of science from 2006 to 2014. Prof, please join me. Thank you very much for your program director. You're looking so gracious this evening, lovely. It's a pleasure to receive the mic from you. Uh, colleagues, good evening to you all. I'm uh, feeling slightly vulnerable because I think that the same notes that I got were sent to our program director. <laughs> I was told to welcome you all. So give me a few minutes just to reiterate a welcome, a warm welcome to each one of you. And I want to just add a few further things. Um, but to our chair of council, colleagues, she just flew in now landed half an hour ago. We appreciate that. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, Ambassador. And to other council members that may be here as well. And then to our Vice-Chancellor, uh, thank you so much. Uh, you mean so much to us, and we look forward to your engagement and your presentation uh, in a few minutes' time. We also have the CEO of the HSRC, Professor Crane Sudin, who is also an honorary professor at our university. Crane, welcome to you. Uh, you've already heard the chief executive from the Nelson Mandela Foundation, Mr. Hello Hatang, uh, Selo Hatang, I'm sorry, uh, and to your team, because this is a joint effort. It's not just the university, it's also the foundation. We appreciate your presence and the support from the foundation as well. And that includes Professor Vern Harris. Is he here? Thank you so much, Vern. We met uh, last year when 
I think in the venue upstairs, you gave a captivating, very riveting presentation to us. Uh, professor Harris is an adjunct professor of our university and also part of the organizing, organizing committee. And then newly appointed honorary professor Iron Rensburg. We chatted a moment ago. We, ah, there you are. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I think we approved it a week or two ago, and it's just such a privilege to have you associated with our university, and we hope to get our money's worth <laughs> out of all your, <laughs> all your academic wisdom. We'll benefit from what we learn from you. Thank you so much. I see a number of our uh, deans are here. Uh, Deputy Vice-Chancellor Lebochang Hoshatsi, I saw. Professor Cheryl Froxcroft may be here as well. Thank you, Cheryl. So our DVCs as well. Mr. Noel Nechintenza, who is Executive Director and Board Vice-Chairperson of the Mapungubwe Institute for Re Strategic Reflection. Not yet. And then there's several who have traveled, in fact, from very far uh, to be with us. Now, that's relative. How far is far? How long is a piece of string? Well, Professor A.J. Franklin traveled from the U.S. to be with us. Uh, Professor Franklin, honorary professor as well. Welcome to you. You're always so uh, welcome in our midst. There's Dr. Jane, John Edgars. Thank you and Professor Kolela Manku. Welcome to you, thank you so much. And then all of you, you are so welcome this evening, colleagues, students, and friends, and let me not neglect to mention the press, the media, Nikki and others, thank you for being here. Before I go further, let me just if you don't mind, Program Director, just say that it's been a difficult day for us, uh, as many know. Uh, we were due, Alan, we were due to have a book launch at one o'clock this afternoon and for certain ch challenges related to some student dis disruptions, we had to cancel it or postpone it, I wasn't too sure. But um, it was a book, uh, my copy is at home, as I recall, it's uh, Studying While Black, that's the title. Uh, and I believe that those co-authors of the book may be here as well. Uh, Professor Molitsane, holder of the Dube Chair in Rural Education in the School of Education from UKZN. Thank you so much, ma'am, for being here, and our apologies for this afternoon. Dr. Mahali, she's not here. Uh, she's from the Human and Social Development Program of the HSRC. And the third one is Professor Charlene Swartz. Not here either. Uh, she's an Associate Professor of so Sociology, adjunct at UCT and also a member of the HSRC. And so just be aware, colleagues, that we would have launched the book today. Uh, and I'm sure there will be copies available. And I hope that we can do something, Alan, uh, in the near future. So, welcome to Dalegumpe. This time, that Mandela, the colloquium, is a pivotal event that we've been looking forward to for a long time. It's part of the process that we as Nelson Mandela University have embarked on since our historic name change in July of 2017. It's born out of the need of a, for a scholarly exploration of what this name change means for our university as we take on the legacy of Mandela as a figure, figure of social justice. And so the notion is for us to grapple with the idea of Mandela, grappling with the ethical imperative, the opening up of infinite possibilities of justice and so much more. So we're here at this colloquium, which will start now, but go on through to Friday, to explore what has already been imagined around Mandela, but also to explore new avenues as we seek 
revitalizing ways of thinking about and creating the repurposed university that we hold so dear to our hearts. Thank you, and I look forward to our engagement further. For you. Um, thank you, Prof. Leach. I think now I can introduce myself because in this course, you have to wait for the adults to be in welcomed and introduced first before I can introduce myself. <laughs> Colleagues, my name is Vuyo Bongela. I'm responsible for the advertising and branding at the Nelson Mandela University. I omitted, I forgot to, to introduce myself. Next up, we're going to have a contribution by Ndade Hatang, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the Nelson Mandela Foundation. Just a brief uh, on his accomplishments. He participated in the post-1994 transformation of the National Archives, including providing archival support for the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. He is a member of the editorial, editorial team for Nelson Mandela's book Conversations with myself and co-editor co of the Nelson Mandela by himself, the authorized book, book of quotations. He is also the 2014 Archbishop of Tutfelo, but I think what is quite exciting as well, he recently successfully summited Mount Kilimanjaro yeah. twice in the efforts to keep a girl child in school. Welcome. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, you know, this uh, bit about the mountain. <laughs> That's the first thing I got uh, from, from one of the guests here. I won't out, out you. Um, he said, oh, it's so good to have you here. So you're not climbing any mountain. So I said, no, they yanked me off a mountain to be here. But the most important part about this introduction is that I'm a Kaiser Chiefs fan. Um, which is, uh, which if you follow the archive, Madiba followed very well. Uh, but I, I won't contest that because there are people who are wearing wrong t-shirts tonight. There's a couple of them who are like that. It's, I, I don't know who wears that publicly and this so uh, but uh, we every family has one so uh, we can we, we forgive you um, ambassador January Badil thank you so much for your graciousness all the time you know we, we work with you every year on the year and last year was also just a fantastic year I didn't know that you were a musician and uh, it's good to know that and that you, you you continue to push the legacy. Thank you very much. Um, um, we had a fantastic meeting earlier on, and, uh, and, uh, and she, she indicated that if there is one thing that uh, she should like to do is to take this university to another level in terms of how it celebrates Madiba's legacy. So we wish you all the best to that, and we'll be part of the journey. Um, Prof. Sudin. Uh, if uh, there's one person, in fact, I should say two people who, who can withstand any pain, it's uh, Prof. Sudin and uh, Andre Kiat. They've worked with us, and they know how difficult it can be, but they keep coming back. <laughs> so, so I said to, to Vern, do you want to double check? Oh, Prof. Uh, Harris, for all of you here. <laughs> Uh, I have to always remind my colleagues, as soon as we got off the car, guys, Prof. Harris, uh, can't you uh, So, so it's, uh, they keep coming back, and we're grateful for the partnerships that we've had, Mandela Initiative being one of the biggest that we did with, uh, with yourself. Uh, thank you very much for your vision and his enthusiasm to keep Madiba's legacy going. Um, uh, I have to tell you this. I promise you, I said it, I'll make it a one-liner. Uh, I've worked with Andre Kiet for maybe just under 16 years, 17 years maybe. And, uh, and Andre has one thing that, uh, that's a signature. Um, we've tried to, to, to deal with that and I'm hoping that you, you, can, you can bring him back. I, I, I apparently even at home they failed. Um, his taste for shoes. Um, <laughs> You know, I, got, I got off the plane and uh, the first thing I saw was Andre's shoes and I thought I hope he changes those shoes. So before I could say anything, uh, Prof. Harris then said, 
your shoes look pretty bad, eh? So, so, so I thought, oh wow, someone at least could say that. Uh, uh, Prof. Andrew Leach, thank you so much for the welcome. And, and, the, and then there's, of course, uh, a Mami Lodi girl in, in the midst. Uh, thank you so much. And many friends who are here. Um, I can see that, uh, you know, after being VC, you do need to come back to... <laughs> hey, it was tough when some... <laughs> Those years. <laughs> Prof. Rensberg had a dark, dark, dark hair. And then... 2016, 17 happened grey, <laughs> almost overnight. So, and of course we have to also acknowledge that uh, you continue to be an inspiration for us and the many friends who are in the audience and uh, one of our trustees, Professor Hamilton. Um, Prof. Ndebele sends his regards, he couldn't be with us. It is a singular honor for me to say a few words this evening and to participate at this event that is linked to the centenary of Madiba's birth. Well, it's, uh, the collaboration with the university, again, has been something that Andre particularly has been pushing very hard, and uh, I'm happy that we are here finally. But seriously, I believe this colloquium to be an important intervention, and one, one which I trust will mark the beginning of an elevated relationship between the foundation and the Nelson Mandela University. I was lucky enough to spend an hour with the vice chancellor this afternoon, and I came away enthused both by the university's determination to carry the name of Nelson Mandela with the gravitas that it deserves by the, but with the rich thinking and planning in relation to Madiba that the university is engaged in. If we are honest with ourselves, the weight of the name Nelson Mandela is a heavy one for any institution to bear. As the Vice Chancellor and I both know and experience every day along with the honor and privilege, that name brings responsibility and complexity. And there's no blueprint for getting it right. But if we are to get it right, then a commitment to transformation is of fundamental importance. Our board of trustees just last week adopted a new strategic plan for the foundation, one which demands that we become an impactful change agent in the world and that we set the bar high as a transforming, if not transformed, organization. There are strong resonances between our board's thinking and the, the thrust of the Vice Chancellor's inaugural address last year. Let me quote one short paragraph from that address when she said, in transformational terms, we need to work to make the university organizationally more efficient to serve our students, staff, and community better. In transformative terms, we must give our university a sharper social justice purpose and praxis, close quote. In my view, the university and the foundation could be more perfect, couldn't be more perfectly aligned. Given the contingencies of this moment in South Africa's history, it is incumbent on the academy and on civil society more broadly to make transformation its anchor. Yes, we must contribute to cleaning up the mess created over the last decade, the so-called nine wasted years, depending which four are <laughs> And the unfinished business that comes with what I presented to the Vice Chancellor earlier on. I need to pause here and just, I don't know if how many of you saw a video uh, this morning, which I, I believe came from last night, of a young child um, who exchanged some words with a teacher and then proceeded to slap him. I don't know if you saw it. Uh, and I, I, watching it, it had all the elements you want to see of a broken society. It had two parents who stood there paralyzed, not sure what to do, just with the words first before the slap came. Because the two parents, a, 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 a father, I don't know if they are the, the, the young man's parents, but it's a, it's a father, oldish, and a, a mother, and both of them watching this, and uh, they're not sure whether to, what to do, basically. And uh, after the, the slap happened, uh, then the, 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 the father then comes in and takes the teacher away. 
the humiliation of that moment weighs heavily on my soul. That brokenness is the student who is being taught by my wife at the moment, who is teaching grade, uh, grade, grade four to seven. And uh, I keep asking myself, is the university ready for that student? And I'm not so sure. And if we are to talk about transformation, it starts there. That universities must begin to build a person who can then come out of it better than how they came in. And I'm hoping that universities will begin to reimagine how we, 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 we build children who, come, who are coming out of violence, a violent society, and who are now practitioners of it, who have normalized it normalizing the abnormal in our society. Yes, we must help fix the broken institutions and systems, but our real challenge is how to support the fundamental transformation of our society. And this is a global challenge, of course. Humanity faces a moment where it has become clear that the very future of the human project depends on now on our capacity to do differently. And to do differently, we have to think transformationally which is what we are trying to do with the Mandela Initiative. Our test, arguably, is a test of imagination. Here in South Africa, for example, we have to reimagine constitutionalism as an instrument of transformation and wrestle it back from those who wield it as a liberal weapon to protect privilege, power, and property. How the likes of AfriForum tends to use constitutionalism is something that fundamentally society should be asking ourselves. Did our forebears have that in mind, that those with privilege, whenever that privilege is challenged, they can then use the constitution again and say, actually, it was because of this, it's because of this provision that's in the constitution that you shouldn't touch me. I don't think so. Justice itself must be reimagined. It has to be more about, more than just protecting rights. I would argue it, that it's about a transformational hospitality to the other. We owe it to Madiba, both to think differently and to do differently. Institutionally, we owe it to Madiba to be agents of change. I often quote Madiba saying from prison in 1976, that a good heart and a good head are a formidable combination. But let me close now with a line from a speech he gave in 1994. The context was the OAU gathering. And Madiba was reflecting on this continent's contribution to South Africa's liberation struggle. And he says, she, Africa, opened her heart of hospitality and her head, so full of wise counsel, so that we should emerge victorious, close quote. I hope we do emerge, emerge victorious. My hope for the colloquium which will unfold over the next two days is that it will speak to our hearts and our heads, that it will inspire us to go out into an increasingly complex world with confidence that we can make a difference, that we continue to use the academy as a platform for giving hope, not empty hope that comes with politicians, for example, but one that's tangible, like I said, that brings in one and changes them that they go out as a more caring human being for the other. The one who looks after those who are vulnerable in our society, who opens their arms and says, come in, instead of building more fences that say, stay out. Thank you for all being here this evening. And thank you everyone for supporting the colloquium, particularly the, both the university team and the Mandela, Nelson Mandela team that's here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ntate Hatang. I could claim that the yellow in our um, university colors um, was influenced by the fact that Dado Mandela was a Casey Chiefs fan, but I'd be lying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for um, your contribution. Next up, colleagues, we have um, the Chief Executive Officer, Prof. Crane Sudin of the Human Sciences Research Council. He is a former Deputy Vice Chancellor of the University of Cape Town and his publications in the area of social difference, culture, education policy, educational change, public history and popular culture include three books, 
four edited collections and over 190 articles, reviews, reports, and book chapters. He is involved in a number of local and national and international social and cultural organizations. Welcome, Prof. Thanks very much. Um, thanks very much, colleagues. It's, it's, a, it's a great pleasure and honor to finally have arrived here. So I'm not going to tell the story about how all of this happened. Uh, we'll tell that story uh, tomorrow. But simply to say to you, this has been long in the making. So Vice Chancellor, it's really great and an honor to be um, with you and uh, I appreciate my relationship with, with all of you. Uh, I come here, I, th I think more than I go to most places. <laughs> um, and I really enjoy being here and being stimulated uh, by you and your colleagues and, and, and let me say also by your students. I have repeatedly come here and, and found a core of young people that uh, um, have been absolutely inspirational. Uh, to Cello, Cello uh, we walk a long road and um, uh, we've had uh, some successes, but we struggle. I mean, why we struggle the way we do, I hope that it doesn't always uh, work like that. I hope that this particular initiative uh, gives us the, uh, the, both the space and the, the prospect in looking forward of being able to say that we are making a change. And I'd like to thank my colleagues Andre Keat and Vern Harris uh, for um, what we've tried to put together uh, here. Ambassador, uh, lovely to see you. Um, you don't know me, I know you. <laughs> so, thanks very much uh, for gracing us with your presence, and all of you. I mean, I know lots of you in, in the room, and um, uh, it's, it's really wonderful to have you all here. So, let me make a, a couple of comments. The first point that I want to make is that an academic focus like this, such as we are embarking upon here, on Mr. Mandela isn't the first time that this has happened. So I was very privileged, and I was looking for the T-shirt, I was hoping to uh, wear it. I wore it in the garden the other day. Um, we had a colloquium at Fort Hare about 10 years ago on the legacy of Mr. Mandela. It was a really great occasion. Um, but this event, as all of you know, uh, um, is very different. It's different, of course, in the sense that we're um, um, engaging with the uh, figures of Mr. Mandela and Masa Sulu as part of their centenaries here, but what we're doing here is trying to build something. So it's different to uh, all of the other events in the sense that out of this we want to build through our institutions, through the uh, Mandela University, the Nelson Mandela University, through the Nelson Mandela Foundation, uh, and through the uh, knowledge producing institutions in our country, we want to build a scholarly project uh, around the significance of uh, Tata Mandela. And in those terms, this project is more than simply academic celebration. It's more than political hagiography. It's more than genuflection in uncritical homage to the so-called father of the new South Africa. It's about engaged scholarship. So it's scholarship in honor of Mr. Mandela. And we're not an apologetic about that. We don't want to apologize. But we want to say that we are never going to be uncritical in the ways in which we are going to engage with the story of Mr. Mandela. So what is 
engaged scholarship. I'd like to talk about that for just a minute. I'd like to talk also about the difficulty of how you engage uh, with a figure seductive as, as that of Mandela. So let me quickly attempt to put these two uh, questions into perspective. The person who coined the term engaged scholarship was an academic called Ernest Boyer. He described engaged scholarship as teaching and research that, and I'm quoting him now, that connects the rich resources of the university to our most, to our most pressing social, civic, and ethical problems. He wrote that up around about 1985. The idea with being engaged is about giving the university or the research community a sense of how it might imagine itself differently in the world to the traditional ivory tower image which most people have of the university. It is about giving it a sense of urgency. It is about how you work those things out and work with those things that make a university distinctive. Those things that are the inescapable attributes of university. Things such as the deliberate and deliberative cultivation of the mind. The preoccupation with critical thinking. The deep abiding interest of the university operating at its best in how life works and trying to understand that. The interest in explaining all kinds of phenomena. What I'm saying to you, it's about taking all of those things and asking how all of these very distinctive and unquestionably specialist things which make university an unquestionably thing, which is also elite. You know, how you take this thing about being a space of the elites, and you have the space turned towards and focused on the problems of the world. Now, of course, many people will tell you that that's what universities ultimately are for. Now, they may be so, but we're in a real tense moment here in thinking where universities are going. And the discussion around all of that uh, is uh, uh, deeply, deeply uh, divided. You have on the one hand people who see the university as this very instrumental uh, uh, vehicle towards uh, personal progress and uh, social progress in very instrumental kinds of ways. On the other side, you also have uh, um, many people who want the university to be a kind of handmaiden, if you like, to the state. And so, what we're having to construct here is an institution which is in that tension, which is going to uh, be working with these wonderful, wonderful things that make the university distinctive, but which at the same time produce inside of it this sense of responsibility about uh, what critical thinking, uh, what curiosity uh, might be uh, all about. And it's not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing to, even when you speak to parents, uh, Vice-Chancellor, when you say to parents that our university is for the public good, and that's what our university uh, ought to be doing, their eyes glaze over, you know, and they say, my child didn't come here for you to do your politics on my child. Uh, and we have to be, in some ways, acknowledging of that. But we have this real big job of convincing them that these institutions which we occupy here now uh, have this absolutely central role in the midst of all of this complexity that you talk about, Silo. Uh, our institutions have this responsibility of clarifying questions for ourselves. We're never going to solve the problems, but it's about clarifying the questions. Uh, and um, in the scholarship of which I talk 
there's a lot of interest in what we here in South Africa uh, have the capacity and the potential to be in a global sense. There's a lot of interest in the world in how this South African version of the university can provide an example to the rest of the world of how a university ought to be and could be. And this program here that we're beginning to talk about here, the Mandela program, is one such opportunity in which we take these questions of what it means to be a human being and put these questions deliberately alongside of these questions of knowing. Uh, I'm a sociologist. Um, and so, if you're giving a class, it's the questions of ontology, <laughs> alongside of the questions of epistemology. And you ask how these things come together in terms of what this responsibility is all about. So here's a real opportunity here, Vice-Chancellor, in uh, what we have in front of us. But I think we need to acknowledge that working with it, uh, as we are trying to do with the figure of Mr. Mandela, is going to be difficult. Simply because Mr. Mandela lends himself to these extreme forms of expression which uh, land up in either disrespect or this romantic kind of uh, hagiographic uh, explanation of what Mr. Mandela is, is, is all about. So we've got to ask how you take a Mandela, the idea of a Mandela, and use this idea of a Mandela as a prism through which to understand a whole lot of problems in front of us. You know, how do you take that as a filter? In the same way as you have now in many institutions around the world, Gandhi being used like that. So many institutions will model themselves around a, 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 what they call the scholarship of, of, of Gandhi. And out of it has come a really interesting and very productive uh, tradition. I mean, the Gandhi tradition, I mean, just to counterpose it to what we're trying to do here, is a deeply productive tradition. The Gandhi tradition is full of debate. Uh, it is characterized by contestation. You don't have one position, you have multiple positions, and people are like this uh, at each other all the time. But in very productive kinds of ways. You know, because what they're doing is, is bringing vantage points uh, through this figure of Gandhi uh, to understand how you come to a sense of, 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 of what an, an issue uh, like climate change, for example, uh, like literacy, uh, like the work that we need to be doing with um, gene modification, I mean, all of these, these questions. You know, so we need to be asking how Mr. Mandela helps us as a prison to get to those kinds of uh, complexities. So I'm very excited about what we're embarking on here. Uh, and I'm excited because we're doing it together, Vice-Chancellor. You know, we're not doing it uh, alone. I'm very excited about being a partner uh, uh, in, 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 this, in this mission. And I say that because we're not going to solve our problems by ourselves. Our institutions are never on their own going to be sufficient and to have the sufficient resources, intellectual, uh, human uh, capacity resources to be able to uh, come to a better grasp and better ways of engaging uh, with, with this complexity. But we're trying to model it here. We try to model it with the Mandela Initiative, Sela. We, we try to put together uh, these institutions of society. And we're doing it another, in another version here. Uh, and it's a, a really Im important moment. And so I'm very excited. I want to thank all of you uh, for coming and for uh, giving of your two days to join with us here. You'll hear us saying tomorrow that this is not an ordinary conference. It's not an ordinary conference. This is a colloquium in which we are working with provocation. And the whole thing is going to be modeled on provoking each other. Uh, in the best way in which a, a university can. So thank you all very much. Thank you very much. As you've published in popular culture, I'm sure you'll know the song by Drake that says, what a time to be alive. 
Um, colleagues now sing Tondaba, the crux and the climax of tonight, the opening address by Umama Uwetu Opete University Gatata, Prof. Swongile Mutwa. Um, colleagues, she has a distinguished career both in South Africa and the United Kingdom, working in both development of the public sector institutions as well as in academia. Between 2010 and 2017, she was the very first Deputy Vice Chancellor for institutional support for our university. Between the years 2004 and 2010, she served as the Director General of the Eastern Cape Provisional Government. In 2014, she was appointed as a Commissioner of the Financial and Fiscal Commission, and in July 2017, she was appointed <laughs> as its Deputy Chairperson. And the libele prof ingo mayako, otherwise been zaitola, and my voice is going. So I invite you to the program, to the podium, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I need to institutionalize uh, in Tongayami <laughs> so that everyone knows it. Perhaps you can get Andre <laughs> to sing it uh, before uh, I speak seeing that uh, in this uh, centenary year, uh, uh, Mr. Hatang, we have been, I've been doing a lot of speaking. <laughs> this has been the only downside of the centenary program. <laughs> uh, so um, I'm very happy and humbled uh, to, be, to be here. I'm very excited also because uh, it's wonderful when a plan, a plan begins to come together. So I'm, I'm very, very uh, excited. Um, and uh, after listening to both uh, Silo and Crane, I really uh, do want to confirm that I have found that the thinking that is going into this uh, work is uh, audacious. And uh, it's a project uh, uh, that is gigantic that is going to need a lot of courage uh, from all of us um, as uh, scholars and interlocutors that are going to be working on this uh, project. So uh, I, I would like to start by greeting uh, our chairperson of our governing council, Usis uh, Nozipo, the ambassador Nozipo uh, Januari Badio. I also want to recognize uh, the guest of our, cha of our chair, uh, Mr. Kocho Paris, who is uh, with us uh, this uh, evening. Um, I also want to recognize my colleagues that have just been speaking here, uh, Professor uh, Crane Sodin. Crane uh, indeed uh, is a, a good friend uh, of ours, and uh, he actually loves uh, our university, and we love to work with you, Prof, because I mean, you're just, uh, you're special as an intellectual. Uh, I want to, to thank you, Silo, uh, and I really want to acknowledge the meeting that we had earlier on, uh, which signals that uh, we were correct in our quest and our ambition to fight hard and work hard for years uh, to uh, fulfill our ambition of getting the Mandela name as a part of our, as a name of our university. So I, I really thank you uh, for, for working with that. Um, I, I know that a, a lot of um, everyone has been uh, recognized by name. Uh, we've got our honorary professors here that have been mentioned, um, which I'm not going to repeat their names because uh, you have heard from Professor Lish, uh, who is here. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, all our honorary uh, professors. I want to acknowledge the teams uh, from uh, both um, Nelson Mandela Foundation and the HSRC, which I know that they are here uh, this, uh, this evening and for collaborating with us. And I want to recognize uh, uh, my colleague, Professor Kiet, and his team also, who have been responsible uh, together with our partners to make sure that uh, this is, uh, becomes possible. Um, I do uh, want to say that I had a list of uh, people that I was supposed to mention, 
they've all been mentioned, so I'm not going to, to go uh, through that because uh, my remarks are not as short uh, because there's a lot I want to say which is going to frame the work that we want to do in the next two days. So I think I should go straight uh, to that. But I want to recognize everyone that has made time to come here, including our own academic leaders, the deans, uh, our academics, uh, the friends of our university, our staff, our students uh, that are here with us tonight. You are correct that it's very hot here. Yeah. <laughs> So, honored guest, uh, this is a gathering of friends, of collaborators, of colleagues, of co-travelers and critical interlocutors which are here to make sense, if this is at all possible, of Mandela, the person who has been chosen by the global community to put a human face to our aspirations for a socially just world. This is the plain, straightforward truth that were required to deconstruct, that were expected to problematize, so as to unweave its simplicity. For certainly, massive layers of complexities and ambiguities are captured in this statement and this position between veneration and the critique of Mandela. The university's name changed in 2017 from Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University to Nelson Mandela University. At first appears merely to drop a word, to edit an acronym. The M of Metropolitan, the geo, the geo municipal name is simply deleted, some may think. Far from it though. As you know, the discarding of the M shifts the entire angle the essence of the university and our intellectual and social project. My address to you this evening deals with one aspect of this shift, and I think Crane has spoken quite eloquently to this. This is to develop with partners yourselves an academic and scholarly expression of the name Mandela. It's really hard. Uh, in his address on the name change occasion, our then Deputy President Siri Ramaphosa emphasized that, and I quote, we are shouldering a great responsibility by taking on the Mandela uh, name. Our response has been uh, to position Nelson Mandela University as a university in service of society and all the exciting and good work that comes with that through our core mandates of teaching and learning, research and engagement. We outlined this clearly and in some detail in my inaugural address last April. We have picked up from the concept note uh, that guides this colloquium that we make a distinction between Mandela, the person, and Mandela in italics, that is Mandela, the social figure about Mandela, the person, an infinite number of books, films, and documentaries uh, already exist. And then uh, Professor Van Harris uh, reminded us uh, last year here at uh, this venue uh, that uh, it is an industry arguably supporting a saturated market uh, dominated by work which reproduces the same basic narrative and the same well-known images. For Nelson Mandela University, the Mandela in italics, in a deep sense, refers to the social figure, the dense location of scholarly work where history and subjectivity make social life, that is, they coincide. Such reading of Mandela is scant or non-existent, a point also which, one, which was underscored by Professor Harris in the talk that I've referred to earlier. He suggested that, and I quote, all too rare are the fresh line of inquiry, the unexpected insight, sustained critical analysis, and the deep deconstructive reading of archive. Here precisely lies the potential for the Nelson Mandela University to take the lead in promoting what we would call loosely Mandela studies. I'm going to reflect a bit more on this later uh, in my talk. 
Shortly after the university's name changed, I was privileged uh, to begin my tenure as vice chancellor. Can I have water? Uh, this happened uh, for me at a singular and personal level. Uh, it ties me directly to the University Council's profound and for me daunting proposal for us to reflect, as our council said uh, in 2017 after we got our name changed, our council said, since we have got this name, we need to reflect on the moral and social responsibility associated with embracing this name its implications for our identity and strategic choices, as well as transformations we need to make in order to align ourselves more appropriately to the name. That is what our council said. I have since then started an extensive listening campaign with the, within the university and with its publics, engaging our academic and support service units, the research and engagement entities, and so on. These uh, engagement uh, sessions are continuing. Key to our engagement within and outside the university is the idea of the Mandela name. I have presided over a range of strategic discussions on this subject matter and opened and launched many events, research initiatives, chairs and centers under the rubric of the university's Mandela centenary celebrations. And I also dare say that uh, in this period, we have appointed a number of uh, eminent visiting and honorary professors who are going to work with us in this journey. We are generating a renewed impetus for humanizing pedagogy in our teaching and learning endeavors. And we are in the process of reimagining engagement beyond the bounds of conventional academic practices. Our university is first and foremost a university, and it has to execute its mandates as part of its public function across the sciences, the knowledge fields, and in service of society. It does so against the backdrop of the grand challenges of our time, the challenges that Madiba himself engaged with almost his entire life. They are well known with poverty and inequality being key amongst them. We need new interpretive schemes and practices to challenge them. This is the task of the university, in my view. Because we are a university carrying the Mandela name, one way, amongst others, of responding to these challenges is to become a generative academic expression of Mandela, as Crane has reminded us, like no other institution of education. Our university should be known as the foremost scholarly formulation of the Mandela legacy, with pragmatic import and real-life programs that makes a difference to ordinary people. Far from being about Mandela, the person, the scholarly formulation of Mandela in italics, the construct, the embodiment, the touchstone is the endless, relentless pursuit to bring an intellectual angle to this figure of justice, to generate new praxis of engaging social injustices, to move the very idea of justice further, and I would dare say beyond Mandela. When we chose Dalipunga to signal our engagement on Mandela, we had the convening of dialogues as the name intimates in mind, for those of you that know Isikosa. But we also ask this time that Mandela, to, to put up front our conviction that Mandela should be encountered in the plural. Much of what I'm sharing with you in these remarks as some of you who would have heard me, uh, uh, I'm sure the deans are saying not this again. <laughs> uh, uh, some of these remarks have been stated in different forms over the past year at our university. However, I would like to make three key arguments that, may be made, that have a bearing in my view on this uh, colloquium. Firstly, to work with Mandela in italics, the social figure, is to accept that legacy is not 
aesthetic inheritance, but a disruptive revisitation of the past. In saying this, I am mobilizing the work of Wilder on two great black intellectual figures, Amy Cisse and Franz Fanon. We heard a lot about Franz Fanon uh, this week already from Professor Torres. In relation to them, Wilder argues that a legacy, uh, and I quote, neither means that it constitutes a static piece of the past that remains unchanged over time, nor that it expresses a harmonious evolutionary unity between the past and the present, close quote. Legacy suggests rich possibilities for conceptualizing the relation between past and present so that we can work against the lasting structures of domination. This presupposes an intellectual and practical solidarity with our continent and the global south. Mandela, as an intellectual proposition, invites, invites us to do just this as a key orientation of a Mandela studies program. Legacy, in the way we want it to be employed, refers to all the struggles against oppression, here and elsewhere. It also refers to Mandela's context and his co-travelers like Winnie Matigizela Mandela, Albertina Sisulu, Grasa Machel, to name just a few. Secondly, uh, I want to highlight this. There is a staleness about our intellectual social and political imaginations in the higher education sector at present. All universities, it would seem, are now social justice oriented and they throw around the concepts of transformation, diversity, inclusivity, decolonization, curriculum renewal, and so on in their branding and public relations campaigns, eh, Vuyo. Nelson Mandela University, at this time, under our leadership, must reject this approach. Our work and its framing must be the university's brand. It must be able to speak for itself. We must be seen to cultivate humanity and put effort into engaging ourselves and our communities in as yet unimaginable ways new forms and modes of thought, and new practices of producing, framing, and distributing knowledge and its relationship uh, to society need to emerge. So this is the question, colleagues. How do we work towards transforming this university into one that is indisputably in service to society that we promised? Ramaphosa offers the answer in his address when he states that, and I quote from him, by recognizing the legacy of Madiba and by studying, I repeat, by studying what he stood for and what he means to our people, you will fully realize the transformative value of higher education. Mandela in italics is then not just a name for the university or a signifier of responsibility, but our guide for how we can live up to the Mandela legacy. A Mandela studies program worthy of that name will have to meet this challenge head on. Thirdly, what does it mean to engage Mandela in italics? What does it imply to contest him as a social figure? And we have already spoken a uh, prof to contestation. Allow me colleagues to spend a bit of time on this. There are two ways, probably many more, in which the image of the ghost can be brought into conversation with our idea of the social figure uh, of Mandela. Firstly, Eleke Boma, who would have joined us at this event if, if it were not for a family bereavement, has already exp explored Mandela as a specter in the prison garden of the Ropen Island in her 2008 book, Mandela as a Living Ghost, so to speak, as a prisoner for life. She argues, and I quote from that work, 
It was in relation to their ghostly dimension of mere living on that concepts of justice and dignity were most clearly to be comprehended, unrestricted by the circumstances of finite ordinary life. As Mandela himself wrote in a key essay, National Liberation, here one is able to stand back and look at the entire movement from a distance, and I close quote. This ghostly dimension of prison life allowed Mandela and his comrades on the island to formulate sharper categories of justice and human dignity. In a sense, the living ghost of Mandela during the prison years paved the way for Mandela, the ghost after his death. Secondly, Mandela is a social figure in the way Aver Godin understands the ghost to be a social figure. He haunts us in our efforts to reimagine and reclaim the university. Godin argues that investigating the ghost can lead to that dense site where history and subjectivity make social life. It is this dense site that we want to begin to explore and indeed to excavate in this colloquium. Thinking of Mandela in this way, through the lens of haunting, is also a means of coming to know differently. It is part of the necessary transformative labor surrounding how we get to know. It is this labor that will allow us to transform our relationship to society. Here then is a suggestion of the potential power that resides in calling on the social figure of Mandela to create anew the university's social justice intentions and to make transformational and transformative leadership a standard orientation of our university. Mandela is more than a set of decontextualized values. The figure of Mandela mobilizes affect in multiple and complex ways. His haunting of this institution requires that we be drawn as Godin reminds us, sometimes against our will and always a bit magically into a constant process of engagement, not only with the traces of the past, but also with the future imagined at the moment of transition. Mandela is inseparably entwined with both this past and this future. The belief in the realization of this future has largely been lost along with a global wide loss of faith in democratic institutions and their promises of a more equal society. It is the social figure of Mandela, his ghost, who tells us that this future is not lost. His future is haunting us and we have to respond. Johnny Radway eloquently describes Godin's call for a new way of knowing as a practice, and I quote, of being attuned to the echoes and memories of that which has been lost, but which is still present among us in the form of intimations, hints, suggestion, and pot and potence, close quote. It is fitting, therefore, that we consider Mandela in italics as a figure who draws together the past present and future in a dynamic and productive way. To hear these memories, import them into the present and project them into the future. We hope that this colloquium therefore will be this kind of ear, a form of hearing that can be taken up by a Mandela Studies program. I hope that with these three points, I have stirred your interest into imagining how intellectually exciting and challenging this is going to be, as well as socially pragmatic and politically productive a Mandela Studies pro program can potentially be. The idea of Mandela, the social figure, permeates the work that some of you are already doing. We try to keep abreast of these developments because it is instructive for our work as a university we are pleased that you are here tonight as our collaborators. A critical 
Mandela Studies program is already in the making, therefore, because of the work that you are already doing. Let me conclude, program director. One of the ways in which we intend to become a revitalizing academic expression of Mandela is through our establishment of a transdisciplinary institute for Mandela Studies, the TEAMS. This colloquium is a warm invitation to all of you to help us think, do, and co-travel this journey with us. We have left open both the idea and the form of teams so that it can emerge in our traveling discussions with each other. Critical openness should be a key principles, principle of team to designate the idea of the critical in Mandela studies itself. That is going to be left for this colloquium to figure out. I, along with my team and colleagues, see teams as the principal articulation of my intellectual project as vice chancellor of the Mandela University, of Nelson Mandela University. It will work to bring together the academic themes uh, outlined in my inaugural address. These themes are the following that I outlined last April. Social justice, poverty, inequality, and unemployment, public transformative leadership, university transformation, non-racialism, equality, human rights, and democracy, university, community, and society, the Mandela identity and posture, renewal of the academy and curriculum, humanizing pedagogy, transdisciplinarity, revitalization of humanities, and student centrism. These are the themes that we advanced uh, as our path uh, going forward. Teams will be key in framing our university's response to these themes. In particular, it needs to develop a pan-African intellectual solidarity and scholarship. It needs to mobilize Mandela studies to contribute to redrawing the frontiers between natural sciences and the humanities and explore the renewal of humanities in various forms. The real conversation, and I realized this when I engaged with the chairs, uh, 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 research chairs this week, and entities, uh, the real conversation between the natural sciences and humanities has not yet begun. Teams need to facilitate discussions on how different disciplinary ways of knowing can be breached for the natural sciences and humanities to piece together each other's boundaries. Moreover, it needs to be seized by the question, how can such trans transdisciplinary knowledges be co-created with our publics? We are challenged to do this beyond the university. Ultimately, teams may be one of the outfits that, that works in ways that puts the question of what the university is for firmly on the table to rethink in deep ways the purposes of the university's endeavors. At this colloquium, we have many consummate Mandela scholars, those who have already engaged Mandela in italics and in plural. We are grateful for your time, your solidarity, your expertise. I'm not going to name you, you know who you are. The same goes for our core travelers, friends and interlocutors from the Nelson Mandela Foundation, the HSRC, our students, our staff, invited colloquium attendees, and the university's executive and council. I hope that you will enjoy your time here at our university. I wish you a great colloquium. I'm looking forward to receive the report of this colloquium, and I'm going to participate tomorrow as well as a guide on how, through the name of Mandela as its social and its social figure, we can live up to our ambition of a university in service of society. Again, I want to thank our partners, the HSRC and um, the Nelson Mandela Foundation uh, uh, for making sure that this watershed engagement happens in the next two days. I want to, to thank all of you uh, for, for joining with, with us uh, as we begin uh, this uh, uh, audacious work. Thank you very much.
as I mentioned, colleagues, that was Uvu Tonda about the crux of why we're here. Um, Prof, uh, Mr. Hatang did say earlier, the idea is to come into university and walk out changed. I think we all change today. We'll be different thinkers tomorrow when the colloquium starts. Thank you very much for your address. Lastly, um, colleagues on, on our program, the vote of thanks will be delivered by Ambassador Nozipo Janir Badil, our chairperson of council, and her leadership and management experience at board and executive levels pans um, the public, private, and non-governmental sectors and the United Nations in the fields of education, diplomacy, as well as ICT, mining, and the manufacturing sectors. She is also an active advocate of race and gender equality, social justice, which we have heard mentioned today, responsible and ethical governance, corporate governance, and sustainable development. Please join us, ma. Good evening, all of you. Um, professors, distinguished, and also our university uh, community, Vice Chancellor, um, and I, all protocol observed. I'll take advantage of that diplomatic thing. So, my job is always the easy one to say thank you, um, but it is also a way of saying thank you that is heartfelt. It's not just words, it's really heartfelt. Um, to be here today for me is such a luxury, but also such a privilege to spend a day, a half a day, an evening thinking about thinking, thinking about our lives. Because often we just rush through it without stopping and thinking. So for me, really, this colloquium is about stopping and thinking and exchanging ideas and enjoying that. Also know that it's done for a very specific purpose. I thought I should just say three things before I thank you officially. That this happens, this colloquial happens at a very seminal time in our history. It happens when we are listening to all the inquiries. So for a day and a half, you're going to miss out on that. <laughs> those, those of you who are glued to your television sets. But at that, it, from those inquiries, uh, coming out the, the issues that this colloquium is going to be also addressing. So we really are an action research project. Mm -hmm. As we think about it, we are doing it. And I think that for us at the university is really quite a privilege to be able to do that. Secondly, it happens on the eve of our elections, this colloquium. And I often wondered what the university is going to do with sort of how do, we, how do we engage the students on, on elections from a voter perspective? Because they're all over 18, I imagine. And, um, and those elections are, to me, I always say elections and, and politics are about party politics. They're not about, and party politics I call politics with a big P, and the political process politics with a small P the stuff that Professor, Professor Sudin was talking about, to say, are our students aware of the big P and the small P? To say, actually, our lives are touched by the state from the moment we are born. Because you get a birth certificate from home affairs, and you're born in a hospital. So our lives are institutionalized all the time, until you die, when you get a death certificate, also from the state. So whether, and your education system is determined by the state. What you learn at school, what you learn at university, the health, the health that you get from our hospitals is all driven by the state. And so our election really going into them, we should be thinking about the big P, party politics, and the small P, the political process. And lastly, this this, this colloquial happens on the eve of International Women's Day, um, and it's that on Friday. And I don't normally like to make a big thing about the women's issue, but at the same time, I thought I couldn't really say thank you without recognizing it. 
and also to recognize that it's wonderful to be part of a trio of women trying to really achieve the Mandela dream, the Mandela vision that we have for ourselves. So just taking advantage of those three, I shall say tonight has really been, for all of us, a festival of ideas and a feast of so much food for thought. And that much of what has been put forward before us this evening is quite daunting, but it's also extremely novel and certainly far-reaching. Huge challenges face us in relation to the work that, is, that, that, that we have to do. And I'm convinced that we will only be able to undertake this journey into this self yet unknown world if we do this in partnership and as we have done in hosting this colloquium. So thank you very much, the Bomile, for having taken the step forward to actually do the partnership thing rather than just talking about it. And I have to remind ourselves that, you know, it's not that we are so unfamiliar with partnerships. Our country was liberated because of partnerships. The whole world stood behind us. You know, sometimes we forget the anti-apartheid movement and how big it was across the continent, our continent, across the globe. And so let's also bring that thought back into this conversation about doing things together, because alone we will go not so far. So I wish to express our gratitude as Nelson Mandela University to the foundation. Sidlo, it's always a pleasure to work with you. And I like the fact that you are also accessible. I can pick up the phone and you'll be at the other end of the line. And I think that's also what leadership should be about. So that we're not leaders that people can't reach, that people can't engage with and people can't talk to and we can share. And I think this relationship with the foundation is absolutely essential, an essential ingredient to this project. Professor Sudin, uh, it's true that I haven't really had time to chat with you or have any opportunity for interaction. Um, but I really appreciate the fact that the Human Sciences Research Council is supporting the university in all kinds of ways. It's not just here. But we have relationships that go far and go deep. And thank you for your very insightful comments this evening. And, and I look really forward to this colloquium. Um, and I wish to acknowledge the thought leadership of both of you who have availed the capacity of their, your respective teams to grapple with us in this co-creation. So it's also about your teams, the people you work with. But thank you to the Vice-Chancellor, Sibongile, for your foresight to work with these two outstanding institutions to bring together our collective wisdom and to offer space to generate new visions. I am very, very happy that Iron Rensberg is going to be part of us, Professor Iron Rensberg. Sorry, I sometimes forget these um, titles. But you know, I, th I, I think of you as th this, this amazing man who really transformed the, the University of Johannesburg into what it has become. We're very proud of that, and we're very proud that we know who is at the helm of it when it was going through its own transformation. So to have you amongst us at the moment, in this, as they call us, this province of legends, is also nice, and I think you're also from here, aren't you? This is home for you. This is where you sucked the milk in a way. And um, yes, yeah, so, and, and of course, there's always people in the background who are organizing these things. And I'd like to thank Andre, Andre Kiert. You know, Andre and I also go a long way in the Cape, in Cape Town. I used to live in Cape Town for seven years, and we did a, a lot of work there, also around race and gender mainly in the training things. That's when we were trying to change mindsets in Cape Town and at the University of Cape Town to see what we can do. Andrea, I'm very excited. I remember coming to the university for a meeting and bumping into you at one of our administrative buildings. And I was so delighted. And again, I think for the chair, to be chair of this critical studies in higher education transformation is really a very fitting role for you. And I think the university is very, very lucky to have you drive this. So thank you for bringing this colloquium to life, Professor Kiet, and your team. I also wish to thank all of you who have given your time to be at this colloquium today. I know that your generous sharing of ideas, your critiques, and your contestations will produce the rich debate that we're looking for, that the Mandela Vice Chancellor articulated in her opening address. Mandela studies will make a fundamental difference to our students and their communities and to ordinary people in society. 
This is what will be the hallmark of Mandela University graduates in the future. And I deliberately invited Koja over here because he's interested in entrepreneurship. I know there's normally no private sector representation in these, in these things that we do at universities, but we do have a business school and we do have a school that we're also trying to inform to, to, to try and uh, uh, have the transformation bug bite it. And so in this regard, there is a lot of talk about social entrepreneurship you know, rather than just financial business entrepreneurship. So, and there are all these ideas. There are lots of ideas that are being generated by young people across the globe. They're actually changing the world. And, uh, and I thought, uh, as Kojo showed an interest, we, we, we're very keen to listen to you tell us about your ideas around social entrepreneurship. So lastly, I wish to thank the often invisible layer of staff and students who are providing support services to ensure the success of the colloquium, be it cleaning, be it preparing our food, be it setting up the audiovisual technology and preparing the press statements, as Bongine said, and the many, many other tasks that it takes to host this event over the next few days. Please enjoy the next couple of days and we, as we journey together as friends and as collaborators, as colleagues and as co-travelers, as the Vice Chancellor said, and of critical interlocutors to make sense if this, of this almost impossible and possible Nelson Mandela, the person chosen by the global community to put a human face to our aspirations for a socially just world. With those words, thank you once again to all of you, and let's go out and change the world. Yeah.